In the late 1950s, Murray Allen, a brilliant scientist working at the University of Sydney School of Electrical Engineering, together with the Mathematical Instruments section of the CSIRO, developed a digital electronic analogue based computer. Mechanical analogue computers, known as differential analyzers, were already in existence. However, this was an electronic solution using the latest technology transistors. A differential analyzer is a specialized type of calculator that could be given a problem expressed as a collection of differential equations, which could then be used to generate a numerical solution. They have the advantage of being near real time and more accurately describing real time phenomena such as constantly changing waveforms and physical motion. Murray Allen designed and built ADA automatic digital analyzer in 1958. Previously, much computation was done in purely analogue systems, even, even electromechanical systems. They either did it with a room full of people called calculators, or they did it theoretically. The main advantage in, in analogue, of course, is they operate in real time. They can be relatively fast in producing a solution, but not necessarily a very accurate solution. There are two types, actually. The first one was uh, purely electronics, which was restricted, and the second type was um, the mechanical one. At that time in the 1950s, uh, the University of Sydney was the centre of development for digital computing in Australia, and Murray Allen was working on ADA, and this was a really new process of trying to develop digital computing in a transistorised form. I just thought that since I was in the area where we were doing analogue computing, it would be a good idea to try and do that thing digitally. Murray Allen worked at CSIRO in the Mathematic Instruments section, specialising in digital circuits. That led to the design and development of what became known as ADA, which stood for Automatic Digital Analyzer. It was a publication on a digital differential analyzer, I think and it was published by Bendix Corporation. Murray Allen took the design of a valve computer called the Bendix Differential Analyzer, and he used that design as a means of transistorizing it to develop a computer. ADA was the first machine to digitally simulate analog functions. So it was called ADA because it was an automatic differential analyzer. So it was a digital version of an analog computer. It was not an analog computer, of course it was digital, but uh, simulated analog processes. It was an experiment in how to build a transistorized uh, computer. It was a research project for CSIRO. Transistors were, were developed uh, in the late 1940s. Much of the work on ADA was done in the early 50s, so it was one of the very early transistorized computers. And it was all transistor and diode logic. So I had an opportunity to do a PhD while retaining my salary. Turns out that he worked and he was awarded a PhD for that exercise. Oh, the logic design was done by me, yes. That was Murray Allen, David Wong and some others. Oh, I think it was just the three of us. I had a guy from Western Australia, Tony Savory. David Wong was hired by Snowy Mountains. I think David was recruited deliberately with the on the advice of David Myers to join the Snowy. His charter was to make a report on whether they should do something or spend money on computers. In fact, Murray didn't name that computer. It was Dr. Basser christened that because Basser was actually mostly funded at Murray Allen construction of the ADA machine. And Basser's name is famous at Sydney University. The computer science department is called the Basser Computing Laboratory. The Sydney University was the focus at that time on digital computing. As far as I know, ADA was the first transistorized digital computer, yes. In the 1950s, the Snowy Mountain Hydroelectric Authority was working on building their hydro power stations up in the Snowy Mountains, and they knew they needed digital computing to coordinate this machinery, the flow of water, very complex 
question of how to operate a hydroelectric power station. The authority realised they needed a computer to do some of the calculations and that's why they funded that as a research project at Sydney University. And they were much interested in getting the surveying right in terms of getting the dams constructed and in particular the alignment of the tunnels that are an extensive network of tunnels that carry the water from the dams through the hydroelectric generators. Of course, the tunnels were, were drilled from either end and had to meet in the middle. And they were using a differential analyzer, a mechanical one. They were much interested in getting something you know, computerized about that. They got into discussion with CSIRO and the head of Murray Allen's division, the Mathematical Instruments Division, a man named David Myers. And Myers suggested that Murray Allen's digital differential analyzer might be just a shot for them. And in the meantime, they were using the Sydney University computer, which was called Ciliac, to do a lot of their calculations. One program I remember, Bob Dakin, he programmed on a simulator that was running on the Ciliac computer in the Bassett Department of Computing Science. John Bennett from Sydney, he said, I'll, I'll do a simulator for you. He gave us a program that behaved like the computer we were building and tested all the software beforehand. But the first computer I saw, of course, was Ada, and I wasn't directly involved in that. That was Murray Allen, David Wong. Ada was a serial machine. You had to bootstrap it up. You fed in paper tape. He corresponded to the mechanical analog. So you had registers which were programmed for different functions like scaling and integration and interconnection. Just ran and everything got interconnected as you'd programmed it, yes. It operated on a magnetic drum which was manufactured at Sydney University. It was a small drum. It was uh, totally made within the university as far as I recall. It was a homemade drum and that was pretty crude because uh, it was based on equipment they used for firing guns, I think. This is one of the modules from the, from the Ada computer. Well, there were two types of transistors that were used. One was the Philco surface barrier transistor, and that was much faster in switching than any of the others, and it was also delicate. So if you exposed it to over voltage, it just went. If I remember correctly, it used OC71 germanium transistors and OA70 germanium diodes. They were point contact diodes. They were much faster than the than the junction diodes that were, became available about the same time. The modules were either a pure logic, which means they were, uh, were not laid out uniformly as this one is, or they were registers of some sort, and you can see some sort of structure in that module. If you wanted a counter that go to 10, you had a design that you can just use. Yes, they're easy to design. Murray probably would have pioneered that technique. It was very easy to do because those plastic things that they drilled holes in, you just drilled a hole for the right size for what you did, pushed it in, and then wired it. Well, I don't think anyone else did it that way because by the time they got serious about computers, they had also developed printed circuit boards and other things. Yeah, the modules were actually hot swappable. The voltage, of course, were all relatively low voltages, so there wouldn't be any arcing when you plugged in a module. It wasn't necessary to turn the computer off to replace a module. Either a manufacturing technique certainly was used in other computers. Murray Allen was a very capable engineer who understood digital computing and when he looked at other people's work he was able to come up with some really unique ideas. It was a, our solution to a problem. Murray Allen was a, a very competent fellow and uh, he did a lot of work with, uh, with Ada and with Snowcom and then later on with other machines uh, at the University of Adelaide, uh, Cirrus uh, being the, the main machine. Well, Ada did go crunch at one point. <laughs> Had a bit of a, a, de a death, death moment. <laughs> that destroyed the drum. I suspect there was a failure in that drum. That happened before I became part of the project. The Snowy Mountains Authority, they were thinking of building another version of Ada, which they were going to call Ada II. And at the same time, they commissioned a, a man called David Wong to look into what their computing requirements might be. And at first they thought they might have a version of Ada constructed for them. But Wong advised them at the end of the day, if they were going to go down that track, they may as well build a fully general purpose computer, which the differential analyzer was not. 
David Wong and myself, we decided that a digital version of an analog computer would be less desirable than a general purpose computer. The um, a special purpose can only do the things for which it was built. The general purpose can do anything. The 1950s, Australians were developing their own engineering solutions and interesting ideas for computing. I think the uh, circuit techniques with transistors was a great learning in the ADA process which carried forward. I think it was solved that this, you can make computers. ADA was the first machine to digitally simulate analogue functions and it was uh, pioneering in that sense. <laughs>